Morning, everyone. Oh, loud. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Nice. Yeah, we were helping out with some of the young families yesterday, and I didn't realize how tired I was <laughs> until I got home <laughs> and <laughs> really knocked out. <laughs> and so I think even this morning, a little bit tired, a little bit out, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll manage to get through this somehow, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I, I think just. Um, some of us were at our worship thing last Sunday, and I think even just being reminded of just having that time in worship just to, I don't know, in the midst of like crazy misses of weeks, right, just having that time to reorient and to refocus our hearts on God, right, and to have that space for encounter, right, so, um, yeah, I'm excited for today, I'm excited for worship, um, I'll pray for us, and then we can, we can start. Heavenly Father, um, God, we want to invite your presence into this space, God. We want this to be a place where your glory will dwell, right? Both around us, Lord, but also in us, Lord. And so, God, I pray that even as we open up this time in worship, Lord, that your presence would come, Lord, that you would be honored, Lord, that this would be glorifying to you. Lord. And so come meet with us. Come meet with your people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Please stand if you're able. Just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you are looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. 
Please remain standing for a scripture reading, <coughs> which today comes from 1 Kings 19, 9 to 13. So please read, please read alongside me. There he went into a cave and spent the night. By the way, this is Elijah. I forgot to add that. <laughs> he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand before them in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? You may be seated. <clears throat> I feel like when I was reading this verse, that last line, right? what are you doing here, Elijah? Right? And I think even when we look at Jesus and think about just how we relate with God, right? I feel like that's a question he asks of us a lot, right? The why are we here question. Right? Um, I think um, even sitting on this text, um, it was in a lectionary this week. I was thinking about this verse even a few weeks ago. And... I think usually when I read this, right, I usually think it's a sign that I need to stop and rest a little bit, right, and just kind of see God in the silence, right? But I think this time around reading it, um, I think a different aspect of it stuck out to me, right? One of the things I love about just this part of the Old Testament is that it has a lot of callbacks to other parts of the Bible, right? And so specifically for Elijah here, it's a lot of reflection. It's a lot of things that parallel Moses, right? You can imagine Moses is also the one who went up to the mountain, right, and has a similar encounter with God. But I think what's really, really subtle and really interesting about this passage is that with Moses, right, you have the pillar of burning fire, you have the wind that comes rushes through, you have the earthquake, and he sees God's within those things, right? And over here, you have the similar, you have something similar, but God isn't in those things, right? You hear God instead in the silence, right? And I think a line that just constantly has been repeated to me again and again based on that is just, in so many ways, right, it's God doing the same thing, but not quite doing the same thing. Right. And another way to phrase it, it's the same God doing the same, uh, doing a new thing again and again. Right. So in how Moses was encountered in fire and wildness and earthquakes and wind, you have Elijah that encounters in bush. Right. And so I feel like with this verse, right, I think the challenge for me is just having the eyes to see what God is actually doing around me. Right. I think sometimes being stuck, feeling that place of sameness and just waiting for God to move, I don't have, I lose track that He's still actually moving. Right, he's still doing things. Right, he's still bringing people back to life. He's still resurrecting. There's still hopes and dreams that I've placed on him that he's still moving in. Right? And so my prayer, even as we go into this song, is just to pray for the eyes to be able to see the same God moving again in different ways. Right? And to see him around us in the everyday, in the ordinary, but also in the crazy, in the big. Right? Yeah. So the next song is Fresh Wind. I think it's a... Uh, I'm really tired. <laughs> I feel like I need a fresh wind, too. And so... Yeah, praying for just newness, right? praying for that wind to come give us new life. Yeah. And so if you need to sit, stand, whatever, just worship as you are. Spirits of rushing wind, fire of God breatheth in. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent and turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God fan us to flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out for hearts that burn with holy fear, purified in faith and deed, finer's fire, strengthen what we need. So we the church who bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright, king and kingdom come is what we pray we need a 
fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, the holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Your spirit out, for 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 your spirit out, song is a, a real gift to the church and it, knowing a little bit of the story behind where that song came from is the words mean a little bit more that song came from a church that is riddled with scandals from the pastors to the rest of uh, other staff um, worship team members and so you see what refining looks like when all that's stripped away of all the the trappings of church, the trappings of ministry success, of influence. Um, what they really need is just God. And I think that heart cry is something that we can also relate with as well. When we feel that we are being stripped, when we are being refined, when God is squeezing and pressing all that is not of him out of us. And I think what's important is not to just seek the refining, <laughs> or the pain, or the squeezing, or whatever that looks like, but to seek his spirit in all of that. I love that line, pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out upon this church, upon our hearts, upon this school and this community, our neighbors and our friends. Pour your spirit out. We need the Lord. And we are grateful that when we call on the name of the Lord, that he will come. Call on the name of the Lord and be healed. And so this morning, that's what we're doing asking God to pour out his spirit on us, calling on the name of Jesus who can save, calling on the name of Jesus who is alive. And so this morning, with whatever burdens that you're carrying, with whatever doubts that you're facing, or even, as Chris mentioned, tiredness from watching some kids, lay that down before the Lord and ask him to fill you with his spirit this morning. We can do that because of what Jesus has done for us. On the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup represents my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you celebrate Christ's death and resurrection from now till he comes again. So be filled with the spirit. Lay down your burdens today.
table remain open for the rest of service, but if you're able, please stand for the last song.
Heavenly Father, um, God, you're the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, but you are also the same God um, who acts in all new ways, in different situations, in different times. Um, and so whatever context we're in, God, uh, we pray that you pour out your spirit. God, we pray that you empower us uh, to see the ways that you're moving around us in newness and in redemption and your new creation. God, even in the midst of a world that feels so old sometimes, God, we feel so much of the old brokenness, God. Lord, show us how you're breaking in. God, give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you have a seat, say hi to someone next to you. to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and try to fill this out from last week. (laughs) Uh, uh. (laughs) I heard some of it. I heard some of it. Good. All right. Here we go. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Good for me. (laughs) My memory is going downhill quickly. Uh, Ever since school ended for me, graduate school, oh, man, my memory is gone. Um, and it's hard to remember like what I had for dinner, hard to remember what last week was like. <laughs> it's all gone, it's all gone. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, this past week, I went to the dentist. I got two fillings, not from cavities, but from chipped teeth. There were like two chips in my teeth. I'm like, I don't know how this happened. Maybe I was just brushing too well, and then my teeth couldn't take it. Um, I, I, I told the dentist, he's like, how did you chip it like this? It looks like someone sliced the side of your tooth off. I'm like, no idea, no idea what happened. So as dentists do, they love to talk to you while they're like working on your mouth. So it's really hard to talk. So he's like, oh, where do you work? I'm like, oh, I work at a church, South Bay Bible Church. You heard of this? No. The, um, and then he, he's a Catholic. Um, it's so interesting. This dentistry is Liz's family's, uh, like her family's dentistry that she's been going to ever since she was born, I guess, in Fremont. Um, And all the dentists and the majority of the staff there are all Catholic, and they have a ton of kids. So the dentist that was working on me, he has five. The assistant has seven kids. The other dentist has 11, working on 12. (laughs) I'm like, that's, I was like, your your dentistry is like a reality show. I want to watch you guys. I want to see your life. (laughs) This is so interesting. I'm so curious. So we're like talking, we're getting to know each other, and he finds out I work at a church, and then he tells me, have you heard of the uh, Joe Rogan podcast? I was like, I've heard of it. I don't, I don't really listen to it, just to let you all know, I don't listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, but he's like, I was like, yeah, the guy who watches MMA fights and commentates on that. Does anyone know who that is? No one here. I knew that. Okay, so anyways, he's like the biggest podcast in the world. Um, so the, the most subscribers, the most listens is this guy, the Fear Factor guy. Um, but he found out I was a pastor, and he told me about an episode that his dad sent to him this past week. And it was about an, a Christian apologist on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about intelligent design. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, I just shared a very long rabbit hole dive, deep dive on the cell and all of this stuff. And he's like, you got to read, you got to not read this, listen to this podcast. So I, he's like, what's your number? I'm like, I give my number. And so now we're texting each other about like intelligent design and all this cool stuff. But anyways, Joe Rogan had Stephen Miller on his podcast talking about intelligent design. And his main point was that our cells contain 
DNA, the code of information. And it, he's talking about all of these Christian apologetic points um, with Joe Rogan, of all people, to an audience of hundreds of thousands of people. And it's so interesting. I was like, what a coincidence. Or is it a coincidence? I don't know. It could be the spirit moving, telling us to open our eyes, to look deeper at the world around us, to see that God is who he says he is. He is the creator God in control of everything. So I thought that was really interesting. Because, I mean, I only shared about that because I got spurred on by what Uncle Stephen shared the week before, right? And then, and then I shared about the cell, and then I talk with my dentist of all people about the cell as well. It's so interesting the way that God is working. It really is. These things I just can't make up. I can't say like, oh yeah, I'm gonna chip both teeth. <laughs> I'm gonna go to my wife's dentist and <laughs> he's gonna tell me about this one podcast, about this one guy who is sharing. It's just too many things that line up together, isn't it? But anyways, that's not part of today's message. We'll see what's gonna happen today. Today, we're still in the book of Psalms. Uh, we're gonna be in the book of Psalms for one more week and then we're going to transition out of it, all right? So I was thinking, oh, what are the last couple psalm passages that I want to go through? And um, uh, I was like, maybe Psalm 23. Like, no, 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 Psalm 23 is overdone. It's overdone. Too many, too many, um, like, things have been said. I can't add anything. Like, there's no point. And then I open up my email. <laughs> Pastor Eugene sends out his prayer support letter. And it starts off with Pastor Eugene, like, um, yeah, I was just hiking the John Muir Trail. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. It's like a two, I want to just round up, maybe like 200 mile, like backpacking excursion up a mountain, like through snowpack, because there's so much rain this past winter. So he's like climbing snow banks, you know, camping, covering himself with a mosquito net because there's too many mosquitoes because all the, the snow melts off. Um, and then, uh, what is in his prayer letter? Psalm 23, <laughs> even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I'm like, oh, why, Pastor Eugene? I don't want to preach on this. But then I just got another word. It's like, all right, it's going to happen. We're going to preach on Psalm 23. So let's pray, and we're going to go into Psalm 23. <laughs> Here we go. Let's pray. <sighs> God, I just thank you for this church where um, I can just really walk with you in freedom and share all the little ways, God, that I see you in my life and know that, God, this church is open and receiving and hungry for you. So thank you for every single person here that's sitting here, that's downstairs, that's online, um, that wants to be here, God, we just, I just give you thanks that you have called us together to seek after you because you want to fill us, God, with your presence, with hope, with mercy, with love that overflows. So God, give us, um, yeah, just open our eyes, God, right now, as Chris prayed earlier. Pray the same thing, God, that you would open our eyes to see you for who you are and what you're actually doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Psalm 23, I could almost have you guys recite this, right? Like, as we were doing with the, the verse earlier, you could almost recite, the Lord is my what? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. We'll stop here. The Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd. What's the first Thing that comes to mind when you read the word or hear the word shepherd? What's the picture of a shepherd in your mind? Is it this? Well, whoops. <laughs> is it this? <laughs> right? This is like the quintessential picture of a shepherd. Like they have the staff carrying a baby sheep, you know, like a cloak. I always picture, I don't know why, I always picture them with this on. You know, the, almost like a t-shirt over their head with a band, like a sweatband. I'm like, that's a shepherd. That's what a shepherd looks like. Maybe it's because I was raised in church, but this is what I picture when I picture a shepherd. Um, do any of you know any shepherds, like today? No? Were any of your parents, like, shepherds at all? 
I think my dad or something said that his dad had like pigs. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, they had pigs. <laughs> that kind of counts, right? It was like, you have a pig, kind of a shepherd. <laughs> Anyone else? No, no association to livestock or cattle or sheep or herds? Nothing? Hens. Hens. Oh, chicken. You have chickens? Had, oh, chickens. That counts, sort of. You're like a, what are you, a chicken farmer? I don't know. I know Matt and Christina, you had chickens too, right? One, <laughs> One left. <laughs> don't ask us where the rest of them went. <laughs> That's my Matt voice, sorry, Matt. Um, I actually know a small time shepherd a very small time shepherd, like a handful of sheep. And uh, it's really fun. It's like a childhood friend of Liz. Liz knows so many interesting people. Um, but they host their sheep at this place called Heirloom Farms. And it's in Castro Valley. So going up 680, for those of you who know 680, you can exit on Crow Canyon. And if you turn right off the exit, you go to Costco. <laughs> you turn left, you go to Heirloom Farms <laughs> of all places. It's so close. Um, so they have goats, they have chickens, they have sheep, there's some horses that also, and cows that share the, the pasture there. And um, so because, you know, we have toddlers, what do they love to do? They love Old MacDonald had a farm, right? Yeah, yeah, yo. So we bring them to this farm with uh, Liz's friends. They also have kids exactly the same age, two girls, now a boy. Congratulations to them. Um, so now they're a family of three, just like us. Two girls, a boy, we have two boys and a girl, so yeah, we'll see. Um, <laughs> wait, I didn't think of that actually until just now. <laughs> Anyways, going back to the farm, okay? <laughs> What's really interesting about this farm is that it's owned and operated by a church, uh, the Church of the Nazarene. And so the, the pastor there is like wearing overalls, got like farm boots on, he's a true farmer saw him milking a goat the other day. Um, and talking with the, our friends, I was like, this reminds me of like his mansion, like in, in the East Coast. I'm like, is this like a, re, like a spiritual like rehab, rehabilitation center? Like, no, 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 it's not, <laughs> it's not anything like that. It's actually just a Christian um, like co-op where you can live on a farm and do like creation care. Um, so it's really interesting, really, really fun to get to know this farm, and you can see the hills. Um, this is taking um, from the Crow Canyon Road perspective. So just like right here is Crow Canyon, and then hills on either side. It's so beautiful. Um, one of the times we were there, um, we went to look for the sheep, because the sheep aren't like just sitting there. They're in the hills. They're in these hills grazing. They're looking around. And so I was like, okay, I'll take, I'll take the boys. I'll take the boys up. Immediately, Caleb did, like, didn't, doesn't want to go. He's like, no. So I have to go back down the hill with Caleb <laughs> and then uh, go back down, drop Caleb off, climb back up the hill, pick up Zach. And Zach's like, I'm tired. So I'm like, all right. Put Zach on my shoulder, <laughs> hike up the hill. And I finally, I, like, I'm winded at this time. I like, pass out halfway through. Finally get to the top, and we get to this point here. We're just here, me and Zach. Um, our friend Michael and his daughters are also up there. He didn't have to carry them. <laughs> but um, still looking for the sheep, still looking for the sheep. So there's Crow Canyon, the farm's all the way down there. You can see those hills, you know those hills that you see driving through? There's like animals there, farm animals that use the, the pastures for grazing. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, how much longer are we going to hike to find these darn sheep? And finally, we, we get over to this bend and I see all these little sheep. And these are their sheep. I was like, what the heck? You're like our age, like went to Ivy, you know, all these like similar things. And then bam, they have sheep now. Like what is going on here? This is crazy. There's a baby sheep. That's uh, Zach and our friend's kid. Um, these are other baby lambs and these are the mommy lambs, okay? So we were all there and uh, I can say I know a shepherd now. I know a shepherd, a small time shepherd. He has a handful of sheep. I know some of us also know like people that have a real farm 
I, I was sharing about this with some other friends. I was like, hey, look, this is a sheep that I saw that my friends own. They're like, oh, okay, that's great. Our parents have like hundreds of sheep. <laughs> Tell us what's going on here. But this is um, so interesting to me. I never, I've never read this psalm, Psalm, uh, psalm 23, while having like experienced what it's, what like the responsibilities of owning a sheep are, of being a shepherd. And there's so much that you could say about um, taking care of sheep. But actually, if you look at the subtext of Psalm 23, it's not simply about um, the ins and outs of taking care of sheep, taking care of a herd of sheep, leading them to pastures like this. Um, but actually, there's this whole other meaning in addition to shepherding. I mean, we understand shepherding, right? Like, the sheep need places to stay. They need water to eat. They need food, right? Water to drink, food to eat. And the shepherd is the one that leads them to all of those places, right? But in the, uh, this is crazy when I read this. This is from my commentary. So the Lord, that's Yahweh. That Yahweh is shepherd is consistent with claims elsewhere that he is king. Since ancient Near Eastern monarchs also described themselves as shepherding their people and understood their gods as fulfilling this role as well. As shepherds, such kings understood their responsibility to provide protective order for their people and to administer just and effective laws. So in addition to like those stereotypical pictures of shepherds, of all the cute little lambs and the sheep and the fields that we, we picture when we think the Lord is my shepherd, there's this whole other subtext that what's actually being talked about here is Lord as shepherd, the Lord as king. And I think reading that kind of made me read Psalm 23 in a whole new light. Um, if you think, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my king, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Who wrote this psalm? Who is this psalm attributed to? It's to you know, maybe just one person you can think of that writes psalms, right? It's King David. And so his people, King David's people, view him as their shepherd. But what is David saying to his people as he's leading them in worship? I am your shepherd, but who is my shepherd? The Lord, Yahweh, is my shepherd. I am your king, but who is my king? The Lord is my king. The Lord is the king of kings. That's so crazy. Just in this one line, the Lord is my shepherd. King David is saying, Yahweh is the king of kings. And I feel like that is so, so powerful. When we hold that, that the king of kings is the one who is leading us and guiding us and providing for us doesn't that make this not make sense to a certain degree? It's not like, you know, President Trump or President Biden is watching over you like right now. He's not, give, he's not refreshing your soul. He's not, he's not leading you beside quiet waters. He's not, he's not making you lie down. We don't have that relationship with our president. We don't even have that relationship with our mayor or city council members, right? But the king of kings is your shepherd. He is leading you. And why? I love this. It says, for his name's sake. He, he makes you lie down. He leads you beside quiet waters. He refreshes your soul. He guides you along right paths. For his name's sake. His name's sake is essentially his reputation. He's staking his claim. Uh, the king of the universe has staked his reputation on the testimony of your soul. He needs you. He needs you to be at rest. He needs you to be provided for. He needs to watch over you. Why? For his name's sake. For his name's sake. For his reputation. So that he can be the shepherd. So that he can show himself to be the just king of kings. That, that to me is, is really important. It's not just carry the baby sheep. But it's the king of kings is your shepherd. He's watching over you. He staked his reputation on the testimony of your soul. And you might be thinking, man, my life has not turned out great. Injuries, dreams that have dashed, 
grief, loss? What does this reflect about the reputation of our God if life is not going well for his sheep, for his people? When cancer strikes, when marriages die, when children pass away, what does that say about who God is and his reputation? Well, it continues, right? We know how the psalm goes. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. And I think, um, you know, the green pastures, quiet waters, you don't really find much of that in Israel. <laughs> green pastures, not, I mean, you think of a terrain of Israel, you can think of outside here, like San Jose, all right, California. I mean, uh, when, I took, when I took these pictures, it was after the winter, right? What happened this past winter? It was like torrential rain <laughs> that we've never experienced before, where like dead lakes came back to life. That was crazy. That's not normal, right? This is not normal. And so when David, King David, is describing green pastures, still waters, all of these things, it's kind of like wishful thinking. He's using like a hyperbole, trying to figure out what's the, the best place that he could think of. And then he describes a dark valley, which is much more common in California, like Death Valley, you can think of that, um, and also in Israel. Um, but he's not just talking about the physical here. He's not talking, it's just a symbol of the things that our soul, the things that we walk through in life. Times that are full of rest, full of God's provision, easy to see God's blessing, and then times where we are just in grief and mourning. It's so interesting. Um, even though I walk through the darkest valley, darkest valley in the Hebrew is shadowiest of shadows. <laughs> Shadowy shadow. Um, and so commentators are like, what does that mean? Shadowy shadow. They just say dark valley. You can say valley of the shadow of death. Um, and I think for us, we kind of understand that as well. When it seems like the light has been drained from our life. It could be because you're so tired. It could be because a dream has passed away. Because a loved one has passed away. We're walking through that shadowy shadow. The valley of darkness. And we have to hold this intention. If the God of the universe, the King of kings, Lord of lords, has staked his reputation on your well-being, on, your, on the testimony of your life, then why, why do we walk through these dark times? Why do we have grief and pain and sorrow in our lives? I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What's really interesting here, I saw this um, from one scholar online. After this line is mentioned, for you are with me. This is where King David addresses God directly. For you are with me. Um, from this point on in this psalm, he changes the tense of the pronoun, right? He starts just talking to God. The intimacy is there in the, in, in the language. Um, you talk, the Lord is my shepherd. That's third person, right? Like, he's my shepherd, right? He leads me beside. He leads, he restores my soul. But then once he makes that claim and declares that you, God, are with me, it brings him into a place of intimacy. From this point on in the psalm, it's all talking you, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I think that's so important for us to recognize too, that we can know things about God at a distance. Information doctrine, theology, but to have that experience, to cry out to God, the intimacy with God, it changes the way that we see things, especially in times of darkness when we're walking through these valleys. Um, yeah, so your rod and your staff. <laughs> Here's that picture of the shepherd that you were thinking of. And this is the shepherd's staff, right? It has a little crook at the end. Um, and you don't see another stick, do you? <laughs> your rod and your staff. What is that talking about? Your rod and your staff. The rod and your staff. I mean, actually, commentators disagree about what this means, the rod and the staff. The rod could be used to count sheep. <laughs> it's like one sheep, two sheep, three sheep. It's like counting. Or it could be a rod to like defend the sheep 
defend the sheep from attack from other animals or defend the sheep from attack from other shepherds. I don't know. I'm not sure. Other sheep? I'm not sure what's happening. But the idea here is that the staff, kind of, you can use it to, to point the sheep to where to go, but you also have a rod to defend the sheep, to fight off the enemies. And to me, like, this is just an easy lesson, that when we are facing dark times in our life, when we are, I don't know, for me, it's, a, it's an emotional season. The first school, sending Zach off to school this week, it's an, it's an emotional thing. I'm thinking a lot of like, oh, the first days of Zach and all these, you know, cherished memories. <laughs> like, it's, he's only five, can't be dropping him off at school already. I'm feeling like all these emotions in me. It's not the valley of death, but it is emotional. And I need comfort in that too, right? But even from the places where we need a little bit of comfort to the face of death, we have to remember that our God is a God who is with us. Shepherd God, King of kings, the Lord of lords, he is with you. He is with you. He is with you. You can talk to him. You can ask him to defend you. You can ask him to comfort you. You can ask the king of the universe to be with you. That's so important for us to recognize. You might not feel like you're important enough. <laughs> I feel that as my, uh, a lot of, in my own heart. I'm not important enough to ask God for what I really need. Like there are much more important things that God should be doing with this time, right? But that's not what scripture says. It says, Lord is your shepherd. Even though you walk through the valley darkness. You fear no evil. You, Lord, are with me. So call on him. Call on him. He is your defender and your comforter in the face of death. Face of death. And um, just to bring this back to the gospel, this is from John. Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. This, I don't think this is very common for shepherds, actually, <laughs> in, in like the profession. I'm pretty sure shepherds do not normally lay their life down for one sheep. Otherwise, there'd be no shepherds left. Right? <laughs> no, there'd be just wild sheep running everywhere. This is what the good shepherd does. This is what our good shepherd do does. This is what he did on the cross for us. And he's not just a good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, it also says, now... This is like the benediction of Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Jesus is the good and great shepherd. All right? The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus is the good and the great shepherd. And so if he is our shepherd, where is he leading us? Where is Jesus leading us? Where is the shepherd leading his sheep? Keep going here. Um, it's so important that uh, we understand this question. Where is, where is the shepherd leading his sheep? Uh, so our friends... They have the newest sheep on this farm. <laughs> I mean, they're like our age. They're getting into this whole sh shepherding thing. Um, and so their sheep are the new ones. Like they, they, they obtain them from other parts of California. Um, they, they, get, they get picked up and they live on this farm. And so they're the new sheep on the farm. And what do the new sheep on the farm tend to do? They get lost. <laughs> and not just they get lost, but the other older sheep on the farm also get lost because of the new sheep. And so what happens is when sheep get lost, they actually just die. When the sheep get lost, they pass away. Why? Because they get attacked by coyotes, mountain lions, they get eaten, no trace of them, they're just gone. Or free, I don't know which way you want to look at it. The, uh, 
childhood story where, oh, they're free now. They're, they're, no, they're, they're gone. They're actually <laughs> eaten alive by the mountain lions and the, the coyotes. And so the new sheep are leading the older sheep astray <laughs> to their death. It's really sad. I heard these stories. I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's like, yeah, this is why we have to go like almost every day to bring the sheep back home. Climb that hill, call the sheep, bring them back before the night comes. Otherwise, bye-bye sheep. They're gone. And so you think about where they are leading the sheep. They let them out, lead them to green pastures. Let them go eat, spread their legs, run around, be sheep. But at nighttime, when danger comes, where does the shepherd lead them? Away from the green pastures. Back to their home where it's safe. And I think this is the journey that I see in Psalm 23 as well. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of mountain lions and, and coyotes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sheep get led back to the home. Our shepherd is leading us to the house of the Lord forever. That's where we are being led. We're being led to the house of God. So let's not confuse the waypoints along the way for our final destination. We might think God is leading us to like green pastures, abundance, provision. That's just one stop. The next stop is the valley of darkness, right? But let's not confuse that for where God has called us to. He's leading us from there, through the valley, to the house of the Lord. Why? Because he wants us to live. He wants us to have a home. He wants us to be safe. He wants us to be in his presence. This is our journey, our spiritual journey. We experience the ups and the downs. But what is our destination? Where is the shepherd leading you? Where is he leading us? He's leading us to the house of the Lord. That's where he's taking us, to his home, to his heart, to his presence. For the Jewish exiles and the Jewish diaspora, this psalm was not just a psalm they printed and put, off, put up in their homes and on social media. This was a psalm that they used to worship in longing to be back in the promised land, to be in the house of the Lord forever. They were exiled, kicked out of Jerusalem, no longer able to worship in the temple. And they sang these words as a way to recognize that, yes, we might be in exile now, but we know where our shepherd is leading us. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I think we really need to search our hearts. Is this where we want to end up? Or are we satisfied with just the green pastures and the still waters? Or are we kind of a glutton for punishment? Like, God, refine me, refine me, refine me. I want to stay in the valley of the darkness because this is where I experience your presence the most fully. But God's like, no, I'm leading you to someplace even better than that, the house of the Lord. Let's examine our hearts. Let's examine our hearts. I don't really have, our great shepherd is leading us to the house of the Lord. I don't really have... Um, like one final conclusion for you here. But I have three questions that I want to leave you with. The first is, are you being led by Christ? As the shepherd leads his sheep, green pastures, to the valley, to the house, are you actually being led? It says in verse 2, he makes me lie down. He's, King David is saying, I'm surrendered to the leading and the guiding of this shepherd. He makes me lie down. He makes me rest. Are you being led by your shepherd? Are you being led by Christ? Or are you just going through life? Are you being led by Christ? Are you open to seeing what God is doing? The same God doing a new thing. Can you see that? Are you being led by Christ? Second one, is God with you? Let's check here. Is he really with you? You might think, you might sing it. You might say it in Psalms. You might recite it. You might have known this truth. But just, is he with you? In your parenting, is he with you? In your day-to-day -day job, is he with you? 
in your commute, as you care for your elderly parents, is he with you? As you're going to Costco later today, is he with you? As you're walking through grief, sorrow, and pain, is he with you? I have no answers here. I'm just posing these questions because I think this is what the text is asking us. Is our God with you? Lastly, where does your heart want to dwell? Do you want the green pasture? Do you want the still waters? Do you want the valley of darkness? Or do you want to be with God in his house? Where do you want to dwell? Where do you want to dwell? I could summarize all of these questions in kind of one question. It's like, do you actually trust God? Trust him enough to let him lead you. Trust him enough to, to just believe that he is with you. And trust him enough to, to know that where he's leading you is better. And do you trust him? Do you trust the Lord? Um, how much time do we have? Uh, okay. All right. I wrote a song uh, five years ago. I know this because it's before Zach was born. And uh, you might think, wow, your memory is so good. No, it's only because of that. And it was a song that I, I've done a couple times, a handful of times at, at SPBC. But it's entirely just stolen from Psalm 23. And it answers the question in my heart and my prayer that I prayed over, at the time, unborn Zach. Um, as I was like dealing with the stress and the, the hope of being a, a dad for the first time. And this is the psalm that came to mind. Praying these prayers and saying these words over, in our, over our unborn Zachary, <laughs> that the Lord would be his shepherd. And so, I don't know, should I? Okay, I'll do it. Um, so I want to say these words now from a place, a slightly different place, of knowing that, yeah, these past five years of fatherhood, crazy. Very crazy. I mean, if it was just up to me, probably no family would be left. <laughs> but because our God is watching over us, because our God is shepherding us, I can say, like, there's a family <laughs> because of his grace. And so I want to pray this prayer and, and say these words over us as a church as well. You can join in. Um, it's really a simple song. So let me, let me do this, and then I'll invite the worship team up as well. your shepherd in whatever you need. The Lord will supply everything. So look to the heavens. God will come through. The Lord is your shepherd and he's always with you. Valleys of darkness, and you will be strong. People may hurt you, it won't be long. So trust in the promise, God will come through. The Lord is your shepherd, and he's always with you. Dark. You don't have to be afraid For you're chosen by the one Who already knows your name Strength and courage in your heart A mighty river in your soul For you're chosen by the one You don't have to fear the dark You don't have to be afraid 
you're chosen by the one who already knows your name strength and courage in your heart a mighty river in your soul for you're chosen by the one chosen by the one in valleys of darkness you will be strong no people may hurt you it won't be long so trust in the promise oh God will come through the Lord is your shepherd and he's always Lord is your shepherd and he's always the Lord is your shepherd and he's always with you yes, God we just help us to believe Help us to trust, God. When it's hard and difficult to see your goodness, when it's hard to see your love, help us to trust that you will come through, that you are with us, that you are leading and you are guiding, that you're comforting, that you're defending. We don't want to place trust in anything else in this world. So God, fill us with faith right now. Open our eyes to see you for who you really are, God. The king of the universe and also the shepherd of our souls. So God, fill us with your spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team, would you please come up? as we respond in worship. to declare your promise my soul now to stand so I'll walk upon salvation spirit alive in me the 
steadfast and you are our shepherd and you are good so god may may we just walk with you uh, whether it's in the valley of the shadow of death whether it's in the green pastures and even as we're just heading to the father's house um, you know you prepare a table for us um, so give us the confidence to walk with you just in our everyday lives Um, be with us we pray all this in jesus name Thank you, worship team, and thank you all for coming. I will be signing you guys up personally uh, for our coworkers retreat. I've done a terrible job the past couple of weeks because of, I don't know, I've just been busy right after service, but I'm not busy today. So I have an iPad and I have the signups ready to go. Um, if you just are interested in coming, basically what I envision is part prayer meeting, part party, okay? so if. Nonia Cafe entices you, <laughs> please sign up, all right? Um, and uh, I think that's the only announcement. Um, so we're uh, pastoral prayer. So pastoral prayer. Any prayer requests uh, for the whole church to be praying about? Um, say it louder. Awesome. So it's a prayer, um, a praise that, um, you know, Jackie, Amy's, Auntie Amy's neighbor, uh, came to retreat. Super fun uh, auntie, I guess. Um, she had hip pain for the past, ever since retreat, unable to come to church. And uh, basically w- was scheduled to have a, a hip replacement, but then got really sick, hospitalized. Um, so they pushed off the hip surgery for a couple months treated the infection and then was left waiting for hip surgery in like the fall. But then she just got it. Like uh, God opened up a door. Surgery went well Thursday. Is she back home? Recovering? Doing well. 
God is good. He is faithful. So let's give thanks to God for watching over Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going? Is he still down in San Diego? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, um, maybe Uncle Stephen, you can lay hands on Auntie Jade as we pray. And um, Auntie Amy, you can go lay, lay. Let's just surround Auntie Jade in prayer. And uh, yeah. Let's, whoever feels led, you can just go and lay hands. God, we are we're coming to you in the tension now, walking in the valley, of being with our family members in the valley, of seeing promises in Scripture and wondering, God, are you actually here? <laughs> so God, we, we just ask for comfort, we ask for strength, we ask for your defense in this season for Auntie Jade and her family. We know that this is not an easy time, a lot of questions, God, but we also know that, God, you are our shepherd, that you are with us in the valley. And so we declare these promises over Auntie Jade's father, over her entire family. May they hold on to you in this season. Be especially near to them, even now. Fill her with your presence of comfort right now. Be her strength. Be her guide. Be her shepherd, God. We just know that you are a God who can do the impossible. And so, God, we, we just give you thanks for what you are doing already. And just ask that, God, you would look in mercy. Be a God of mercy right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for sharing that, TJ. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, whenever, um, uh, yeah, just keep us posted. Keep us posted. We'll be praying. Um, we also have our neighbor. I've shared this with a lot of you already. Our neighbor, her... Uh, Two-year-old neighbor is going to have open-heart surgery on Tuesday as well. So pray for them. They're not Christian, but we want to lift them up in prayer as well. So, um, yeah, let's hold on to the faith that we have, that our God is who he says he is. Ah, this is why Psalm 23 this week, isn't it? Yeah, so let's hold on to it. We learn these, we say these all our entire Christian life, but it's because we need it. It's the truth, and we need it. So hold on to these promises, church. God is with you. He is with you. He is leading you, and he is guiding you. All right? Let's all stand for the benediction. Let's surround each other in faith and love. God, when it is hard to say you are good, when it's hard to see your mercy and your love, God, fill us with faith and hope for more. So God, thank you for this church. Thank you for this family. But more importantly, thank you for yourself, for your presence, for who you are, and all the promises that we can mine in the scriptures. That is our source of life. So God, thank you. Fill us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Oh, we're going to keep going. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, the whole way.